Hello and welcome back to the Computational Genomics Lab. Today we're going to discuss NextFlow. What is it? Why do we have to install it? <clears throat> Why is it so important? Because once we install it, we're going to be using it in the background, but it's so critical uh, to what we're going to be doing, and it's really essential for um, data reproducibility. Um, that's a, a major goal of this course, is that all the code you do run and present is 100% reproducible, so you need to track what versions of software you use, what pipe, how you process data in the steps, and that's what NextFlow really does, is it's a task manager to organize all these complex processes, but also keep them 100% reproducible. So let's see how that could possibly work. And actually, so why we, we care, I like this um, quote here that says um, that basically when you publish a paper, that's not the scholarship. The actual scholarship is how you make that data 100% reproducible. And the reason that's important is that actually by the time you publish a result, there's many different pieces of software that are all dependent on other pieces of software. And if you were to try and keep track of all that, it would take you a very long time. And as you can see this big snarled nest here, this net mess here. So you could say I ran, you know, this and that and got this figure, but you need to know what version, what dependencies that program has on other versions, what versions they were using, and versions of those, and versions of those. And so it gets really complex. And so NextFlow is a way to manage all these things and record what versions um, were being used. And it's in combination with a container, which we'll talk about in a minute. But basically, you can think of an empty container, container with software being put into it in the process you want to run it. All the versions and dependencies are within that container, and so it's 100% 100 100 reproducible every time you run it. And that's a really uh, critical goal of this class, is not only to learn bioinformatics, but how to make it uh, reproducible. Okay, here's another example. Um, the human genome sequence should be the same, right? Same data comes in, you run a bunch of software, you get different results. Um, so if you look here in A, if you run it on a Mac with Linux versus a Mac with OS X, or even on the cloud with Amazon, you get different results, and that's not good. Um, and so what we want to do is have a uniform um, pipeline that has, every time you run it, you'll get the exact same answer. Um, Another big problem is you publish a paper, somebody gets a different result, they might be using a different version of a program that you used, and that's actually the only problem. Um, and so uh, this study is showing that it takes about 280 hours to reproduce a given paper. But the data we're going to produce should take about 30 minutes, um, just rerun the pipeline. Um, and all the code will be on GitHub, we'll get to that in a second. So you need a reproducible form of the code, that'll be on GitHub, and then you need a reproducible form of the data that will be stored, and then how that pipeline ran. And that's kind of shown here. So let's say we started with a publication and we wanted to go reproduce it. Well, first we'd go to the code, that'd probably be on GitHub. Hopefully it's well written and well organized. We're also going to uh, practice the best practices of that. Then you need the code and the data, so where's the data? It's usually stored in some public repository, so not a big deal. But then you need all the linked executable code and data, so all those dependencies that depend on other things, that depend on other things. Um, and this is so commonly done, um, and I really hope that this class will sort of get you to learn the best practices right off the bat, make a container, put all the software in it, use NextFlow to manage all those tasks, and get full replication, which is the gold standard. So we're going to be using GitHub. You've probably already used it. We've initialized a Git repository. Um, but it's also important to note that you want to write really nicely. Mark it down so that you can tell people what your task is. Short bits of code so they can digest each one as they go through. And this is a, a great uh, example of a GitHub that you can actually run the GitHub and get the exact same figures they uh, published. So that's kind of the ultimate goal is click a button, reproduce a paper. Um, and that's the goal we're going to do here in class. And so here's a reproducibility um, checklist. These slides are in the link um, down in the description um, and also on the class website. Um, but you know these are just some, some basic principles you want to make sure are tidied up before um, you publish. 
and we're going to go through all this as we go. Um, but I just want you to understand why NextFlow is so important to bridge all of this together um, and document all the different things that are run in a pipeline. Okay, so why do we need that NextFlow? Well, it's going to be able to talk to our server, talk to your laptop. It's going to learn how to communicate with your computer so it can say, hey, what task are we doing? Um, what, how much resources should I give that task? What version are we doing? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so it's all bundled together. Um, and so uh, this is sort of shown here that NextFlow is a very multifaceted language and it can say, what language do you want to speak? And it knows how to go to GitHub and get data from GitHub. And then it can orchestrate and parallelize all the processes you have um, outlined in a container. Um, and so here's an example of what uh, NextFlow act is actually running is saying, well, okay, what process are we doing? FastQC, so we're analyzing how well our reads aligned. Okay, how much resources should I give it? Oops, excuse me. Um, what are the input samples? Where do I want to put the output? And so all of this can be reread if needed um, to understand exactly the flow of work that happened. And so also NextFlow needs a config file. We'll get into this in when we run the RNA-seq pipeline. But it also needs to talk to the server or the computer say, like, okay, how much RAM should I use for this process? Uh, how long do you think it's going to take? Um, and you can adapt that as you, as you move along. And all of these are going to be running in a container. And so a container is essentially just an empty space that you put in every version of the software you want that's all tracked and recorded so you don't have this dependency problem and all the computing is going to happen in that container with NextFlow on top sort of managing all those processes. Again, some, some of the processes might speak in Python, some might speak in R, um, some speak in C and NextFlow can handle all of those different languages and those processes and move data. Um, along the steps in order to get your RNA-seq data or whatever sort of um, container you software you've filled the container with. And so we're going to be using Singularity on Fiji. Um, if, we're, if you're running this locally on your Mac or PC, you'll be using Docker. These are just containers. Think of a shipping freight container that's empty and you're going to stack it with uh, how to read a lot, align reads to the genome, how to process the quant, the count, quantification on RNA-seq, a bunch of processes. And what's awesome is we're going to use the NF core pipeline to just fill the container for us. And we're going to get to that in just a second, but that's the best part. This thanks to this resource it is absolutely amazing. Thank you, NF core, uh, for doing this. They've essentially made industry standard pipelines. And so NF core speaks in NextFlow. So we need to install NextFlow. So NextFlow can go talk to NF Core and fill your container for you. So this is why this is so easy. And within a few minutes, you will have a complete pipeline that is expert certified. And there's literally every kind of um, type of analysis you would need is in there. Um, we're going to see that in just a second. And so this is what a container looks like. It's very similar to a virtual compute environment, if you've heard of that. But again, it's basically a mini computer that has all the pieces of software to reproduce the study um, that you have just published um, and hopefully we publish at the end of this class okay so with that let's go to the good part which is NF core um, and go over what these pipelines exactly are so we have an empty container with singularity or docker we have nextflow that knows how to manage all these processes at once but we also need to know like what software do we need um, and so if we go look here a few pipelines there's literally any type of seek or genomics or anything you can think of is in here um m m and a seek clip seek i mean it just goes on and on and on and on and what's nice about each one of these pipelines is that the experts have let's look up the rna seek one um, the experts have put in, and it's, it's updated, and you can use different versions, um, all the right software, all the right controls, the latest and greatest things. And so really the reproducibility is which pipeline did you download? There's a track of all the versions of the software and their order. NextFlow can go grab that from GitHub because it speaks all these languages, grabs the NFCore uh, pipeline, fills the container, 
and you're off and running um, to do very complicated RNA-seq. And so you can see here, imagine you had to download each one of these little um, spots here on this subway map looking thing is a program you would have to run, get the output, and then put it to the next program. That's what NextFlow is going to do for us. It's going to take the output, it's going to run it, take the output, move it to the next step, and keep track of everything, do quality control. And NF Core is so awesome that they even output the, the normal results you would get from running each of these into a folder. And we're going to get, we're going to run the RNA-seq pipeline, figure out how, how do you set that, that whole thing up. Um, will be um, after we install Nextflow. That's where we're going. So I'm super excited. There's also one for a taxi, which we'll use in this class. Um, the documentation is awesome, um, and we will be going through that. Um, and um, yeah, that's basically it. Nextflow is super important because it helps us get 100% reproducibility in combination with NF Core's wonderful setup of all the software you need, and Singularity or Docker as a container. Those are the three main ingredients. And of course, fills the container. Nextflow manages the whole process. The output is 100% reproducible um, from that pipeline inversion. Okay, so let's go in the next videos and install Nextflow and then get to running the RNA-seq pipeline.